Howdy folks, this is Father Dugan Lane Thousand here, and welcome to another episode of Game Finish Trios, a series where I talk about the games I have played and beaten as part of the Hardcore Gaming 101 Forum's Game Finish Challenge. It's rare that we have an underlying theme tying the games I'm discussing together, but that is what's happened today. My god, we've got an RPG theme! We've got one action RPG from the early ooze, a super simplified turn-based RPG, and... Uh, wait, no, that third one's a platformer. Uh, um... Uh, well, it's not mechanically an RPG, no, but maybe spiritually? You know, you're going on an adventure, you're playing out the role of the character you control, stuff happens. Uh, you know, the, the blood of the RPG, it runs thick through many games, even if they aren't throwing stats or dialogue choices at you every waking moment, so why not this? Today's games were originally logged from the 17th to the 22nd of January 2022. Donald Duck, Goin' Quackers, for the PlayStation. Wait, hang on, did I already talk about this last year? Uh, yeah, I did, but that was the Nintendo 64 version. As I mentioned then, the Nintendo 64 version has a completely different set of stages from the PlayStation version, so yeah, this is an entirely unique game, despite having the same basic gameplay and featuring the first two bosses exactly as is. I, at the time, had recently watched Shugle's video on the original Crash Bandicoot for like the fifth time. I really, really, really liked that video. And it got me in the mood to play something like Crash Bandicoot. But I didn't have any of the Crash games on hand, so I ended up playing this, which I had lying around on the house computer. I initially decided to just beat as many levels as I could muster, see how far I got in this mood. Um, not bothering to grab the toys that unlock bonus stages, and I ended up beating the game in a single session. Yes, I also did that for the Nintendo 64 version, it's happened again. The level design is fairly basic, though I do find the last stage of levels to be less frustrating than the N64 version, and there's even some neat design ideas not seen in that game. This isn't a particularly interesting compelling game, but it plays well and is very good for when you just want something simple. Also, fun private detail. Uh, I tended to take note of how long I'd been playing a lot of these games, and I took exactly the same length of time to beat this and the Nintendo 64 version. One hour and 22 minutes. That is an amazing cosmic coincidence. God almighty. Frain, Dragon's Odyssey, for the Nintendo Switch. Around Christmas time, I had gotten a bit of cash and I decided to try and get some Nintendo Switch games, but didn't know what to get, so I asked some friends online to suggest stuff to me. And this game was recommended to me by Lucky from the World Animation Discord. It is actually a translation of a action RPG from 2003, I think it's the third in its series, but this is the only game that ever got translated and it's just called Frayne Dragon's Odyssey. And it's basically Kemko's take on Zvi, the Argus adventure, which I've never played, but is a game where you control a party of two characters. The player character who uses purely physical attacks, similar to the bump attack system from East, where you just run into an enemy and it damages them if you hit them from the right angle, and an ally character who uses magic spells. You can use fire or ice weapons depending on the enemy's weaknesses, so you're best having one character that uses fire and the other using ice attacks. It's a very straightforward game with some navigational puzzles thrown in and plenty of optional content, 
including building uh, friendship and romance meters. You can craft items that are often used to further increase those meters. A casino town with a couple of side quests and a few extra side quests scattered around the world. I chose not to do any of that, but I really like that the game lets you do that. It's really nice being able to take in as much or as little of the game as you'd like. And the option of difficulty modes and modifiers, albeit ones they have to buy in-game like their items, that's odd. Uh, I like that those exist to make things more challenging or breezy. Whatever floats your boat. And I obviously went for breezy considering how quickly I beat it. I think it took like four hours. Normally it uh, lasts a bit longer than that, or it's supposed to. So I won't really dig into what's there beyond it being a nice game to just run around in, crashing your way through enemies, solving little basic puzzles, and taking in loads of dialogue. Loads. To be honest, I found it a little too wordy, but it's a game that very much likes itself. It likes its own vibe. So I can't really knock it for that. It knows what it wants to be. A very straightforward, light-hearted fantasy adventure with goofy antics, sudden betrayals, and enough casual horniness to be somewhat funny and somewhat concerning if you're not into it. It's that kind of game. At least it's happy with itself. Arch Lion Saga for the Nintendo Switch. At the time I played this, I was having a bit of an arsake, trying to find games that I could play without stumbling into frustrating nonsense. I was playing a lot of stuff at the time, and decided to look up some more Chemco games published on the Switch to see if there was something as easy as Frain. And among the 40 odd games they've published, they have done a lot of games. I chose this one, as it prided itself as being an easy pocket RPG, uh, one of two games that they made in this style, where the combat is really simple, you can turn on a breadcrumb trail to see where you need to go, and you never need to worry about grinding. It's not often you see a game openly boasting about how its core appeal is that it can be beaten in a few hours without stressing out the player, so I gave it a bash. and. Uh, you hear people say that stuff like Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is a super easy beginner's RPG. Forget that. This, this is a real beginner's RPG. There are no side quests and only two very simple navigation puzzles. You just pick, attack, and guard from the menu or occasionally special moves that charge up every few moves. You have a pendant that always restores some health and cures silence, and you can easily find stars that give you extra experience points following a battle or resurrect you at full strength, whichever you want to do. If you just want the basic, most bare minimum gist of an RPG without spending ages on a single dungeon or sorting out equipment for your party or any of that nonsense, then this is really the game for you. Mind you, I didn't find it particularly compelling mechanically, since, you know, it's kind of meant to just be super simple, but uh, battles after a point just become a bit of a war of attrition, restore your health when you're taking damage, and deal enough attacks until the enemy goes down. That does mean the end game's a little unsatisfying, but overall it's fine for what it is. And with that, we've wrapped up another episode of the series. I hope that you enjoyed watching and that you'll tune in for the next video. Thank you so much, and until we meet again, have a wonderful day.